News 3 starts now. Back Wilson throws in traffic. It's picked off by Robert Spillane. Spillane taking off. He's down at the 40-yard line. And the big mistake and the big moment happens again. And what a big moment that was. The reimagined Las Vegas Raiders in prime time tonight here on 3. Thank you for joining us for live after the game. I'm Marie Mortera, the silver and black facing the Jets and see another victory. We have your team coverage tonight of the game, starting with our sports duo, Brian Salmon and Jesse Mary. And now it's time for the Virgin Hotels Las Vegas Sports Desk. Thank you very much, Marie. Jesse Merrick, Brian Simon, yep. live here in Allegiant Stadium after what was a fantastic game. How about that? The Raiders and the Jets. First of all, the atmosphere here inside of the Death Star, like always, was absolutely yeah, great. Yeah, I think I saw they said over 70% Raiders fans in the house for this one tonight. Obviously, we know it's been a little more split even earlier on in the season, but man, did Raider Nation show out in this one. It was incredible. You love to hear it. They were loud. And they gave him quite a show at the end of this one, that's for sure. Yes, and you know what? We have to bring the people into Allegiant Stadium. Pre-game, Antonio Pierce. How about the tradition, what it is now, yeah. playing straight out of Compton yeah. before every game? Like, how hyped is that? You got to love it. He's embracing every part of being a part of Raider Nation, being the head coach leading the way, and embracing his roots and this team's roots as well. It's been cool to see, and the guys clearly feed off of it as well. And what was the acronym that you had, like, for the Raiders after Josh McDaniels? <laughs> AJMD, after Josh McDaniels. <laughs> now 2-0, and AJMD. Yes, and yeah. coming into this game, obviously, he had a lot of momentum that first game, his emotion, yeah. everything else. You and I kind of talked off camera the fact that coming into this game with the Jets, this would really truly tell like how much the Raiders had improved and if they were an actual better team because yeah. they're going to play against a Jets team that was no joke. It was. Look, the Giants are an NFL team, but they are not the Jets. They don't possess the same defense that the Jets do have, especially the front that the Jets have. They don't have a Quinton Williams. They don't have some of the guys that are rushing the quarterback that they do. You could see the offensive line struggled a bit throughout the game, but Aiden O'Connell was great back there in the pocket. Aside from the one interception, Great pocket presence, moving around, keeping plays alive, making the right decision. You love to see that out of the young quarterback in just his third start. Absolutely. So without further delay for all the Raider yeah. Nation that's at home, if you didn't catch the highlights, let's show them the highlights right now, the game between the Jets and, of course, the Raiders. Your Sunday night football scene right here on Channel 3. And as we both said, Antonio Pierce, his era has begun. A huge game for the Raiders to show that last week was no clue. Already down 3-0, to zero, second drive, when the Silver Black go on a nice, Six-play, 53-yard drive, and it was mainly Devontae Adams. A huge 31-yard gain across the middle, and then it's the catch of the night by far. A beautiful one-handed grab by Devontae. So nice. Please, you got to see that thing twice. The Raiders will end up getting a Daniel Carlson field goal. 41 yards. The game was tied at three after that. From there, though, the Jets would add a couple field goals. It's 9-3 Jets just before the half, and the Raiders go on a quick eight-play, 44-yard drive with the big gainer being O'Connell to 1-7, Devontae Adams again. He was looking to him a lot early on in this one. This drive would end with, you guessed it, another Daniel Carlson field goal. Cash money Carlson from 54 yards out, flexing on him with the leg. Silver and black only down three at the half, 9-6. Ah, tied now at nine. We're going to fast forward to the third quarter, into the fourth quarter, and the Raiders get a drive that really would be the drive of the game, sparked by Josh Jacobs. 40-yard run by Josh Jacobs, and... In this game, Josh, he did his thing. That was fantastic, but what's even better was O'Connell trusting his receiver, Michael Mayer. He mosses the DB. Seven yards, the Raiders take the lead 16 to nine. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. After a Jets field goal, the Raiders need a drive to kill the clock, and the Raiders will convert on a huge fourth down. They need one yard, DeAndre Carter, he gets 15 yards, but folks, there's always a but. Three plays later, Josh Jacobs would fumble the ball. Oh, no, he fumbles the ball. The Jets will take over with six minutes remaining, and they need a touchdown, not a field goal. They need a touchdown, not a field goal to win this game. And you know what happens? Robert Spillane and the defense come up huge for the silver and black. Spillane, he's been doing his thing. He comes up with a huge interception. The Raiders win this thing 16-12. to 16-12, to 12, the Raiders win this game. And, folks, as we come back live to me here at Allegiant Stadium, I've gotten rid of Jesse Merrick. He's got to go into the locker room, so I brought my guy. Big 7-2, Lincoln Kennedy coming down from the booth upstairs to talk Raiders. First of all, Lincoln, 
How about the excitement after that game? I mean, it was a, a nail biter down to the end. The crowd in here was fantastic. You guys pulled it out. I don't have a strong heart. I didn't pull out anything. I just commented on it. But I don't have a strong heart for this, this type of cardiac arrest type of game. But you know what? The Raiders were able to pull it out. And to be honest with you, in the past, it wasn't the case for the Raiders. You know, they struggled to close out football games. And that was as close as you could possibly get. The fact that you've got a quarterback who's moving to his left, which is not his throw arm, trying to run away from a defensive end, and still slings it 55 yards into the end zone, I stopped talking because <laughs> I was like, oh, my goodness. This, you know, and every defender is taught to knock it down, throw that football down in the ground. But there's a tight end who was sitting right under it waiting. Yeah. So, you know, but they found a way to win. They're celebrating. You coach a lot more, as I've told you before in the past, off of wins, builds confidence yeah. rather than losses. We'll see how he has coming, uh, coming against Miami next week. Ah, so I haven't had an opportunity to talk with Link since the change with Antonio Pierce. First of all, they had to kind of change the offense around to get Josh Jacobs the ball, maybe get the ball to Hunter Renfro, Devontae, mix in a little bit more variety. Josh Jacobs in the last two weeks, he's had his best two rushing games of the season. How about how he's come back and they've been running the ball a lot more effectively since Antonio Pierce. Well, that's the key word, more effectively. They've been trying to run a lot when they were running earlier, just didn't have the success. Yeah. So the big thing for them is that you've got to have that versatility in your offense. Still relied, in my opinion, too much on number 17. But both teams did. Both the Jets have a number 17, Wilson, and so do the Raiders with the, uh, Devontae Adams. You've got to get away from that. Aiden O'Connell cannot be fixated on that going forward yeah. because teams are going to start to key on it. And more importantly, he had a turnover when he was eyeballing number 17 tonight. Uh, now, can you have the pulse of the team? How much of a boost was it for the Raiders to switch to Antonio Pierce from Josh McDaniels? I mean, it was visible last week, visible again this week. It seems like they just had a huge like, shot in the arm. Well, usually when you have a turnover like you do with coaching staff, you'll have that energy. Because it's it, what I heard, the players were calling for that change, yeah. right? So they got what they wanted. Now you make that move. Against the Giants, you come out with all the energy. But here's the thing. This first half of this football game, they were flat. It took him. It took to go in the locker room at halftime, and Antonio Pierce had to do say stuff like, look, it's 0-0, let's get back and go out there and finish it. But it was just separation by one touchdown. So what do you, what do you call that? Yeah. You say there's a lot of energy there. They beat a dysfunctional offensive challenge Jets team just like they beat a dysfunctional offensive challenge Giants team. Yeah. But they build more off of that confidence with wins than losses. Ah, there we go. All right, so, Link. We're going to go to a commercial, but we're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about what the Raiders have going. Hopefully, we'll get uh, we'll get, uh, we'll get get Antonio Pierce when he comes back. We'll get back to Marie Mortera, who's in studio right now. Marie, uh, we'll be back with more with big number 72, but what do you got for me? Oh, well, we're going to talk about the fans now because you know that they're all fired up after win number two under head coach Antonio Pierce, who we hope to hear from in just a little bit. But first, let's go ahead and show you what people are posting online, the silver and black celebrating just like the team tonight. And you see those images there. Hey, do you want to get involved? Help us tell the story as well. Go ahead to news3lv.com and share with us how you are celebrating tonight. You may just see those images here on air. We'll be right back. Second game since those big changes in leadership. Fans don't think that the Giants win last week was just luck. In fact, they believe it was a step in their new fate. You just saw her there for a second. News 3's Kalia Patterson joining us live also there at Allegiant Stadium to tell us what fans were feeling before the game tonight. Hey, Marie, we're, really, we're live outside of Allegiant Stadium right now. There's so much big energy right now with, after that big win against the New York Jets. And they say it's a new era, and their energy is showing it. They say that the tailgate, well, I was at the tailgate earlier before the game had started, and there was full of new fans for the Raiders, and there was some new NFL goers for the game. And they say they hope that this winning streak is not just short-term. They hope it's long-term. It's a new day for Raider Nation. The team threw in new leadership weeks ago and fans are still pumped up. I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's just going to be a continuation of the energy that transferred over from the Jets win, from the Giants win and Antonio Pierce coming on and letting the players be who they are. And the Giants win brought in new Raider fans. Well, this is our first NFL game ever, but we get to be here at the Raiders game with our really good friends who are 
huge fans. This tailgate full of first timers. We had so much fun. She's pooped out now, but we had her walking around, every looking at everything. Everybody's looking at her. She's in her little cheerleading outfit. Keep the tradition going. This family celebrating a first game and settling a family dispute. She's my daughter and she was a Jet and Giant fan because we're New York Tees, right? He comes along and his thing is, well, you all never took her to a game, so she converted to a Raider. Now, is that messed up or what? All I had to do was take her to Oakland one time. She went through B lot, A lot, all the lots. That was it. She was in love with the Raiders. I just have one word. Raiders! Gloria, speaking highly of the Raiders' new coach, says she can see why her daughter bleeds black and silver. He said, we're all family regardless of what team you're um, representing. He says, now when we get in the stadium and kickoff starts, all bets are off. But when the game is over, we're all family. And you know what? They really are treating me like family. It's pretty cool. Next week's game is against the Miami Dolphins at Hard Rock Stadium, but those fans here in Las Vegas are expecting another win. We are live at Allegiant Stadium, Kalia Patterson, News 3. All the traffic behind you, I'm sure that the area still seems just so electric. Kalia, thank you for that. So let's bring back Brian Salmon now back into the conversation. Brian, what's happening over there inside the stadium? Right now, we right now we have family and friends going back in the locker room to celebrate. So I'll bring Big Lincoln Kenny back in and talk a little bit more about this game. We're talking off camera the fact that I wonder what was like the key to victory for the Raiders in this game. Was it the offense, the, the nice long run by Josh Jacobs, or defense? What was the key to victory? I really think what settled the victory was the plain interception. To be honest with you, I mean, without that, the way the Jets were moving in, it could have been made it a little bit more tedious. And more importantly, if they were able to get a field goal out of that drive, that would have put them within, what, two? Yeah. Of, of, of being able to take the lead. And so another field goal would be end up winning it. So I, I think the Splane interception was a big part. And how about the fact that they made the change to Aiden O'Connell over Jimmy Garoppolo? What do you think that he brings to the table that maybe Garoppolo does not bring? Why, why do you think they made that there, change? There, there's two, two reasons why you make that move. First one is you want to see what you have in the cabinet for the future. Okay? Jimmy Garoppolo was just a Band-Aid over what you expected. That's the reason why you brought him in, a 34-year-old quarterback that's had his fair share of injuries. You're not necessarily thinking he's the future. Gotcha. You draft Aiden O'Connell with the fourth round, that's your future. That's where you want to evaluate. The only way you're going to be able to truly evaluate him is game-time situations. Now, I would say what we've seen out of him so far, he's gotten progressively better yeah. than he did that first game in the Chargers, right? Oh, well, yes. So moving forward, you can build confidence that way. The key for the Raiders' offensive success has got to be balance. You've got to have balance. Josh Jacobs running the football and being able to pass the ball. Not holding on the ball for too long. Yeah. A Aiden O'Connell did it a couple times yeah, tonight. Yeah. Got him in trouble. You got to get rid of that football. So as an offensive lineman, why do you think that they're running the ball better? Because I remember Josh Jacobs said that dude, he's going to run plays that he thought were more like pet plays, plays that he liked, where I, I guess before he didn't have any say in what kind of running plays they might be able to run. So the, Well, I will say this. The two, the two largest runs that he had tonight came off of what I call man blocking. Okay. Double team at the, t the point of the attack. Okay. Then you have one of the double teamers slip up to the linebacker. The first one to make contact was the safety coming from deep third. Yeah. That's what you want. It's too many times we've seen so far this season, Brian, is that Josh Jacobs has had to make cuts yeah. and as soon as he gets the football. So much penetration, especially from the inter interior part. And look, you know, give, give credit where credit is due. Quinnen Williams is an all-pro defensive tackle, yeah. one of the best defensive tackles in the league. He manhandled Andre James tonight. Man. There's no doubt about it. So going forward, you understand you're going to have those matchups where you're going to have to win or even compensate when they're not there. They were able to get enough done tonight. It wasn't pretty. Yeah. A win is a win. I got you. And really, lastly, as far as passing the ball, Aiden O'Connor on that last game, I believe he hit like nine different receivers. Mm -hmm. This game as well, he's been finding uh, he's been finding Devontae a lot. You know, he, he's gotten in Jacoby and whatnot. How do, how do you, uh, I guess, uh, assess his play as far as like looking at receivers uh, from last game? They had 30 passes tonight, 30 pass attempts tonight. 13 of those pass attempts went to number 17. Okay. Too big of a ratio. You've okay. got to break it up more. Okay. Teams are going to start focusing on number 17, as they already have. So there's no, no secret about that. You've got to do more to spread the ball. Okay, there you go. All right. We're going to go ahead and go to break. Give this guy a little rest right now. I need a little rest as well. We'll get back to the break. But the Raiders, they pick up a big win. They move to 500 on the season after taking out the Jets 16-12. to We'll be right back with more live after the game.
Welcome back to Allegiant Stadium. Ryan Stallman, Lincoln Kennedy, former Raider, former UW Husky. I know you're happy about those Huskies. Now. Always happy about the Huskies. <laughs> hey, the Raiders 16 to 12 over the Jets. They improved to four and four in the season. I wonder about this, kind of taking them into the locker room. What do you think Antonio Pierce had to say to his team? Last week they smoked cigars. This week, what do you think he's saying to his guys after this big Well, uh, what, uh, let me try to make this as clean as possible for local <laughs> Please TV. Please do. I, I, will, I will say, pull your head out and let's go out there and play some football, Raiders football. They came out with a different energy the second half than they had in the first half, yeah. and they needed it. Yeah. There's oftentimes, like I told Jason on our broadcast, these are usually with trap games. Because you look down your nose at an opponent. You might be looking for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. you got the Chiefs. you got the Dolphins. Not in the reverse order. But more importantly, with the Jets and the Giants coming here, look, you'll take the wins. Yeah. A win is a win is a win. You'll take it each and every time. But you also have to look at the level of competition. It ramps up a lot. Yeah. So you got to coach a lot from confidence and scheme, what they're trying to change offensively from where they were. Also, what they're trying to change defensively is from where they were to make themselves more effective. So that's why you do it better when you have wins under your belts. I think there was less celebrating after this game and more like, okay, we got the win, but hey, we got to tighten things up. No, they were celebrating. Okay. I mean, you saw Devontae Adams. I don't know if you guys saw because you were down here, but yeah, we saw Devontae Adams and he was celebrating. They're celebrating, rooting and ranting in the locker room, which is something they've definitely earned. Yeah. Okay, I don't necessarily know if you go cigar smoking, but <laughs> it is what it is. You take it as it, when it comes. But more importantly, what you saw tonight was you saw two different teams from the first half to the second half. Yeah. The Raiders showed potentially what they can do. What they can achieve. They're not all the pieces aren't there yet. It hasn't been figured out yet. They still got some ways to go, but they were competitive and they fought. That's the big thing. Ah, and then looking forward, the Miami Dolphins, Woo. they are looming. That offense has been fantastic. Their defense has been a little bit to be desired, so maybe the Raiders can do well on defense. But looking forward to the Dolphins next week, what do you think the Raiders need to improve on in order to play a team like the Dolphins? Getting their front four to the quarterback. Got to be able to probably apply pressure to the quarterback because the Dolphins are going to give you so many different looks with Tyreek Hill and all that speed. You've got to be able to have more guys back there to play safety than up there to play aggressive. You got to get that. Got to get a rush with your front four. Man, Antonio Pierce, I don't know what the heck he's doing in the locker room. He doesn't want to come give his press conference. We we want to get oh there it's about, <laughs> about time AP. All right, I'm gonna let this guy go, but we're gonna go ahead and go to Antonio Pierce. Two and zero as a head. He's two and zero as a head coach. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. Yeah, let's hear what he had to say after today's big win. <clears throat> yeah, I thought you know at that point we had the momentum. Um, There's a play we worked in practice. We got our defense a couple times. Um, it's kind of hard to see little DC right there, and obviously a great uh, great block by Josh uh, Jacobs. But that's just believing in your team. Like, we're right there at the 50-yard line. Our defense was playing really good football. Uh, I felt we were controlling the game defensively, and, I, you know, kind of went my gut. Went with my gut. The offensive line tonight, you know, certainly had their hands full with the Jets, but that's one of the best defenses in all the NFL. So when you think about the fact Colton was out and who they were playing, how proud <clears> are you of that offensive line, Coach? Uh, very. I mean, we talked about that early in the week, obviously, with Miller being out. Big ups to Jermaine. Switching from right tackle to left tackle. Uh, not easy doing that <laughs> in the middle of the season, late in the season. He did it like a champ. Gave us the best five that we felt to put out there to give us the opportunity to win the game. Just a lot of, you know, what you see what I think with this team is guys being, you know, whatever it takes to do for one another, they're willing to do it. And, and that's what I'm proud about uh, with them. Uh, it wasn't pretty at times, but they kept battling. They believed. Uh, Coach uh, Alan Snell here with LBSportsBiz.com. <clears throat> Can you talk a little about the extent to which the change of culture, change of attitude has converted into two wins in a row now? Well, I mean, it's football. You know, not everything will go your, your way. Uh, nobody's trying to make a mistake. <laughs> Nobody does anything on purpose to have a bad call or, you know, do something silly. Um, and like I told these guys at the very beginning, we're all fortunate to be in the National Football League. We're all fortunate to work for a great organization fan base and alumni, and when you come to work every day, do it with a smile, because uh, one day that door's going to close, you're not going to be able to walk in there no more. Um, and it was no different than today. Our fans, they kept us in the game, their energy, their passion, um, their support throughout. That's what energized our guys at the end. And then if you watched at the very you know, the last 30 seconds, I think you saw our entire bench up on the sideline rooting on our defense, talking to Devontae right next to me, Josh Jacobs. I mean, all those guys are sitting there just rallying the troops. That's what this culture is about. It's about team. Coach, I'd like you to talk about the job that Bo Hardegree did tonight. I thought he did an exceptional job calling 
a game for Aiden doing what he could do, sir. Right. Uh, let's go back to the very beginning. This, that was a good defense. <laughs> it, looked, it looked good on paper. It looked good on tape. It was good in person. And I thought Bo and Aiden handled everything they were throwing at us. Uh, very, very talented group up front. Well-coached group. Um, you can see why they're in every game. You can see why they're, they're, they're right there in the mix. Um, but Bo and Aiden and myself, you know, had three rookies, right? Right, three rookies. Um, figuring out together and believing in one another, good, bad, and ugly, we're going to ride with one another. Coach, it seemed like creatively you were uh, getting Devontae Adams involved in the game early, different plays, different looks, and uh, how, how big and important is that in your game plan? Well, I mean, what's the first thing you saw when you watched the Jets? They loaded the box. And we're going to have opportunities there for Devontae. And obviously you saw the first couple of plays is right to him, get the ball in his hands, get him going. Um, listen, when you got one of the best receivers in the game, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stupid. Hey, that's your head coach, Antonio Pierce, yes, finally to coming to the podium. We're going to cut, cut him off. we got to go to break. we got to pay bills. Sorry, AP. you got to get to the podium a little bit earlier next time. We'll be back with more live after the game. Welcome back to Allegiant Stadium, where, of course, the Raiders take out the New York Jets 16-12. to They're now even on the season. Hey, we're going to be done here from Allegiant Stadium. We'll have more coming up uh, 10 o'clock on the CW, 11 o'clock on News 3, and, of course, Sports Night at 11.30. Jesse Merrick's in the locker room getting sound. We'll hear from Aiden O'Connell and everyone else. Be sure to tune into that. But for now, let's get it back to you, Marie, and you can give us all the latest and greatest of what's going on here in Las Vegas. Brian, thank you so much for the latest and greatest there from Allegiant Stadium. All right, we are moving on to a manhunt now after a homicide in the East Valley. Officers say they found a man with an apparent gunshot wound on the street where he died. Police say he was a victim that was involved in a verbal fight with an unknown person that escalated into the shooting that suspect has taken off. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 702-385-5555. One person dead, another injured after a suspected DUI crash in the west part of the valley. Two cars collided around 2 p.m. on Charleston near Durango. It was an 81-year-old woman who was a passenger who died at the scene. A 35-year-old driver in a second vehicle was arrested. Police also investigating a deadly stabbing that happened early Saturday morning near North Decatur and the 95. Police say the man was at home with his girlfriend when her ex-boyfriend showed up and stabbed him. The victim taken to UMC where he died from his injuries. Today, hundreds of people took to Water Street Plaza to learn and to celebrate Nevada's indigenous American culture. Mysteries Ambar Rodriguez has more from Henderson. One of our main motivators is to connect people to education and to help inspire them to reconnect to, you know, where their families come from, where their ancestors come from. New Art Gallery and Community Center, along with Indigenous AF, a Las Vegas-based nonprofit organization aimed at strengthening Indigenous cultures through art and education, partnering with the City of Henderson for the celebration. It's so important for us to share our culture, especially with people who've maybe never met a Native American. American person, don't know about Southern Paiute culture, or don't know about powwows and all of the things. And so when we get to come out here, we get to share a lot of that. We get to interact with the people, we get to answer questions. So even in between the dances, we're talking about the culture, we're talking about our heritage. With more than 50 tribes represented throughout the state, each art piece, clothing, song, and dance has a meaning. Depending on the dance we, uh, we sh we're sharing, it could be anywhere, anything from like fertility to honoring the lands. Um, when we open the ceremony, we're always calling in the directions, so it's always calling in Mother Earth, you know, the skies, the heavens. For the celebration, indigenous filmmaker and director Sage Andrew Romero performed and taught attendees the symbolism of hoop dancing. The traditional aspect of healing and, you know, giving good feelings to people as they watch you dance are really important with this dance, and traditionally that's what it was used for, was to help heal people and so it's still doing that in a sense today by helping people feel good inside which you know releases endorphins within the human physiology which helps people heal. In Henderson, Ambar Rodriguez, News 3.
Well, next Friday, November 24th, New Wu Art Gallery and the Community Center will be hosting an indigenous marketplace to support local Native American artists and other small businesses. It all begins at 10 in the morning at 1331 South Maryland Parkway. And what a beautiful day for the community to come out. Let's check in now with our Ophelia Young. All right, beautiful now, but in a couple of days, we have some real weather to talk about. Yeah, we got a big system on the way and it started to move our direction, but we have 70s to enjoy for the first half of your week. So let's just uh, soak it in while we can. Today's highs in the low 70s. What a gorgeous day. We're dropping quickly though into the 40s and 50s. More and more 40s popping up on the map tonight here in the valley. Anywhere from 53 in Nellis Air Force Base, 54 in Henderson to Nellis uh, North Las Vegas close to 60 degrees. We're on our way down to 40s and 50s and for some folks up north like in Caliente overnight lows dropping in the upper 20s. 50 degrees for us cool but remember our normal is 48. It is November after all winds will remain light and we are noticing a thin layer of clouds move in from a system that's pushing into the Pacific Northwest. Folks that is our next weather maker becoming more concentrated in energy as we speak delivering its first weather impacts to the Seattle Portland area. This one going to spend a little bit more time out at sea before swinging inland. So up next, it'll be San Francisco by Tuesday, Southern California Wednesday with rain encroaching into Southern uh, Nevada Thursday night, widespread on and off rain Friday with a chance of rain lingering into Saturday. And this is what Saturday at 10 p.m. looks like not too bad. This is why Saturday at 10 is important is because that is the start of the big race for Formula One. 10 p.m. 10% chance of showers. So the good news is we'll be sitting at the very tail end of the storm. But up and then until then, as for qualifying nights and practice nights, chance of rain will range from 20 to 60%. So the strip will be wet at times. And as you could tell from a zoomed out version of Futurecast, the system's going to deliver rain in the form of bands over the course of about three days. Over those three days, about a third of an inch of rain cumulatively and up in the mountain forecasted one to five inches of snow for Mount Charleston. Temperatures also dropping into the 60s by Friday, but up until then we got a great start to the week. Temperatures in the low 70s all the way through Wednesday. For the most part, Wednesday is going to be dry, putting a 10% chance of rain on there just for uh, good measure. But things really start to get busy by Thursday evening. All right, we'll be right back after the break. We're finally down to just a few days before the Formula One races come to the Las Vegas Strip and Clark County has shared a list of many road closures to be prepared for. All of the race days include practicing, qualifying and the actual race Saturday will have very similar closures. The road closures will start at 4.30 p.m. with the roads opening back up at 4 a.m. Still had a different approach to a popular winter sport. We'll show you how this group of hockey players are taking their talents underwater. Hockey in the desert. For outsiders, it might seem contradictory, but clearly it is not for the success of the Vegas Golden Knights and all the other hockey groups that have sprouted since. One is taking things to a new level underwater. Photojournalist Norberto Arroyo goes for a swim with the Las Vegas Pupfish Underwater Hockey Club. Here for the white. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, I wonder what is it? Underwater what? I've never heard of it. It's sort of a snorkel game. It mixes like soccer with snorkeling and hockey for like sticks and puck. So it's a mix of plenty of disciplines at once playing underwater. So I thought, what the heck, you know, I love the water, I love hockey, so let's try it. And it was a blast. I was not expecting it to be the way it was um, with snorkeling gear and fins. Be patient, you watch the play and it unfolds and you can really uh, anticipate what's going to happen. And despite it looking like chaos, there's a little bit of order to it and you kind of get the flow. It's been a lot more difficult since, like you said, a pool of sharks. There's a lot more people. You want to try to like get down underwater, like on the floor as fast as you can. To get to the puck first and just give my team the edge. There's nobody that can hold the puck forever. You have to hold your breath. In hockey, you cannot do that. 
you have to rely on your teammates. So it's the ultimate team sport. The maximum amount of time I will be at the bottom will be maybe 25, 30 seconds. We have young uh, players that come in. They start like they want to succeed. They don't care if they're not so good at first. So I believe that if you just keep pushing and pushing and trying harder, you'll eventually get it. Welcome back on this beautiful Sunday evening and what an awesome weather day it was. Temperatures here in the valley climbing into the low 70s in Summerlin. Compare that to just a few degrees shy of 80 degrees in the northeast valley in Nellis. Nellis now dropping to 53, Henderson 54 and North Las Vegas still right under 60 degrees. And we're going to make our way down to 40s and 50s tonight. And for our folks up north, chilly temperatures dropping into the 30s and even 20s out in Caliente. 50 degrees for us, cold, but a few degrees above normal for this time of the year. Winds will remain light, but we are watching a thin blanket of clouds roll in, part of a system that's pushing into the Pacific Northwest. This one is our next weather making are already delivering the first weather impacts to the Seattle and Portland area. This one will drop down the eastern Pacific before swinging inland. We got some rain forecast for the Bay Area by Tuesday, Southern California by Wednesday and rain will close in on Southern Nevada Thursday night going into Friday. Friday, widespread showers lingering into Saturday. This is what 10 o'clock looks like, and we're really keeping an eye on that 10 o'clock because that is the beginning of the Formula One's big race Saturday night. 10% chance of showers, so the good news is the storm leaves just in the nick of time. Up until then, 60% rain chance of rain on Friday with a 40% chance of rain on Saturday during the day about a third of an inch of rain forecasted over those few days and a couple inches of snow up in Mount Charleston looking out to your next seven we've got the 70s to enjoy for the first half of your week for the most part Wednesday will remain dry 73 degrees things really start to get busy on Thursday with highs dropping in the 60s by the end of the week for the weekend we'll be right back after the break Come full circle here on News 3 Live after the game. Thank you so much for joining us more on that thrilling victory on News 3 Live at 11.